So we're going to go through a hypothesis test from beginning to end and um, hopefully by the end you'll have a good sense of how to do a hypothesis test involving two proportions, uh, t uh, sorry, two populations. A sociologist claims that women in the South marry at a younger age than women in the North. An independent random sample of 40 recently married Southern women had a mean age of 21 and a standard deviation of two years. So when we read this problem, things that we should understand and read for is the size of the sample, the population of the sample, uh, I'm sorry, the mean, the sample mean, 21, and the standard deviation, which is 2. Now, if this is a, if this 40 is a sample, and the sample have, has a mean of 21, then it implies that this standard deviation is for the sample. And then you also have to read for the other population. Um, you have the population for women in the South, and then we have the sample for women in the South, and then we also have the population for women in the North, and we should have a sample for women in the North. So we have a sample of 40 for the Northern women. The mean of that sample is 23.5, and the standard deviation of that sample is 3. So we need the sample information from the two different populations, south and north. Does or do these sample results support the sociologist's claim at alpha equal 5%? So we use an alpha of 5%. And like in previous examples, in previous hypothesis tests, we're going to take our p-value and we're going to compare it to alpha and that's how we're going to come to a conclusion. Population 1 will represent the ages of southern brides and population 2 will represent the ages of northern brides. So if that's the case, population 1 is southern brides, so mu sub 1 would represent the mean population for southern brides. And population 2 is northern brides, so mu sub 2 is going to represent the population mean for northern brides. Our null hypothesis is going to be of the form. There is no difference between the population mean age of southern and northern brides. Okay, so there is no difference between the population mean age of southern and northern prides. You take the two populations, the southern and northern, and basically state that there's no difference. And this is going to be the way every null hypothesis is formulated in this type of hypothesis test. You'll, st you'll just state that there's no difference between the two population means. Symbolically, we write mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2 equals 0, meaning that the difference between the two population means is 0, or there is no difference. So when you just subtract two things that are 0, I'm sorry, subtract two things that are the same, you get a value of 0. The alternative hypothesis is going to be that the population mean age for southern brides is less than the population mean age for northern brides. So symbolically, to state that mu1 is less than mu2, symbolically we're going to state that the difference is mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2, the difference is less than 0. The difference is negative because mu1 will be smaller than mu2, so when you subtract mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2, you'll get a value that's negative. Okay, so that's the way we formulate our null and alternative hypotheses. The mean of the sampling distribution and its correct symbol. The mean of the sampling distribution is symbolized by mu subscript x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And its value is going to be found by taking mu sub 1 and subtracting mu sub 2. Now, what happens when you subtract two population means that you're assuming are the same? You get a value of 0. 
So since our null hypothesis states that the two population means have no difference, when we're asked for the mean of the sampling distribution and its value, we're going to write mu x bar 1 minus x bar 2 equals 0, implying that there is no difference between the two population means. And when we go to our, our t distribution, the curve, we're going to label that in the center. Mu, uh, mu sub x bar 1 minus x bar 2 equals 0. And that will always be the case. It will always equal 0. Is it going to be based on the normal distribution or the t distribution and why? This is a t distribution because the standard deviations for the populations are not given. The population standard deviations are not given. So that's enough basically to state that you're using the t distribution. There is a way to do a test when you have the population standard deviations, but I'm not going to cover that in this course. Most of the time in the real world, if ever you do um, a test it involves the sample standard deviation and not the population standard deviation. Since we have an alternative hypothesis that is trying to show that the population mean age of southern brides is significantly less than the population mean age of northern brides, the direction is going to be on the left. The test will be on the left, so when we make our curve, the significant tail is going to be the left tail. So whenever you have a less than zero as your alternative hypothesis, the test will be on the left. And if you have a greater than zero in the alternative hypothesis, the test is going to be on the right. So if we were trying to show that mu1 is greater than mu2, our test would be on the right. So if mu1 is greater than mu2, our alternative hypothesis would be mu1 minus mu2 is greater than 0. The decision rule. So let's make a picture based on what we know so far. The center of the curve is always going to be labeled at the bottom here with the mean of the sampling distribution. Mu sub x bar 1 minus x bar 2 equals 0. The tail, the significant tail is on the left and it's 5% in this problem. So we're going to shade in 5% of area in the left tail. We're going to specify the reject region as any region or any, any uh, test statistic that falls in this shaded region. And we're going to specify the fail to reject region as any test statistic that falls in this region. Now, I had said that the values that get labeled along the horizontal axis in this distribution are differences, x bar 1 minus x bar 2. So if we get a difference that's way over here, it means that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is greatly negative. Because remember, in the center is 0, so on the right side of center we have positive values, and on the left side of center we have negative values. So if we happen to get sample results that are very negative, then that puts us far off in the left tail, and it will produce a small p-value. If we get values that are very, very po let's suppose our test is on the right, if we get values that are very, very positive, it will put um, our test statistic high in the right tail and the p-value will be very, very small because it'll go to positive infinity. So ideally, we want an x bar 1 minus x bar 2 that's far off to the left if the test is on the left or far off to the right if the test is on the right. The decision rule is going to be to reject the null hypothesis at alpha equal 5% if the p-value of the sample statistic is less than or equal to 0.05. This decision rule has maintained itself throughout every hypothesis test we've done. We've always had a decision rule that simply compares the p-value of the sample statistic to alpha. And if it's less than or equal to alpha, then we could reject the null hypothesis. So any x bar 1 minus x bar 2 
that falls over here and produces a p-value that's smaller than 5% will give us reason to reject the null hypothesis and state that there is a significant difference between the two populations. The sample statistic in this type of problem is x bar 1 minus x bar 2, the difference of the two sample means. So that's stated in the next part of the problem. When you look at the experiment, you have to analyze the sample data and the symbol of the sample statistic is x bar 1 minus x bar 2. The value of the sample statistic is what you get when you subtract the two numbers for x bar. So um, for southern brides it was 21, the sample mean was 21. For northern brides the sample mean was 23.5. Subtracting the two of them you get a negative 2.5. If you locate negative 2.5 on the horizontal axis of the t-distribution, you see how it is negative, so it's on the left side of zero. Okay, so here we have our no difference in the center, no difference between x bar 1 and x bar 2, and here we have a difference between x bar 1 and x bar 2 of negative 2.5. <clears throat> So when we calculate the p-value of this sample statistic, it will be the area that goes all the way from negative infinity up until this point, negative 2.5. Okay, so the p-value will be the area to the left of negative 2.5. Now our goal is to see whether or not that p-value comes out to be smaller than alpha. On the calculator, the test we're going to use is the two sample t test, and we're going to round our final p value to four decimal places. Okay, I'm going to walk us through it first, and then I'll open the calculator and show you. You're going to go to uh, stat, tests, and number four is two sample t test. When you look at it, oops. When you look at the, the first few lines, you have an option of using data or stats. When you pick stats, um, you'll have an, an option of entering the values for x bar 1 and sx1 and n1, etc. When you use data, it's going to be taken from a list. This problem gave us x bar 1, x bar 2, and the sample sizes and the sample standard deviations. So we'll use stats. You have the data for the first sample. X bar 1, you're going to put its value, the, the sample mean. SX1, you're going to put the sample standard deviation. And N1, you're going to put the sample size. It's very important that you use the data for the southern brides for X bar 1, and you use the data for the northern brides for X bar 2 because you'll get different answers if you switch that around. Now you know that the southern brides is x bar 1 because if you look at the way the problem was phrased, the very last sentence of the word problem said, let population 1 be the southern brides and population 2 be the northern brides. So we have to keep consistent with that and that's why we're doing that here. X bar 2, 23.5. SX2 is the sample standard deviation for the northern brides, which is 3. N2 is 40. Notice there's a little arrow down. You're going to press the down arrow on your calculator and enter the following. Um, the direction mu sub 1 is less than mu sub 2 because our test is on the left side. If it was on the right, we'd choose greater than, but it's less left side, so it's less than. And there's the pooling that I had referred to. When you're asked to, if you're going to keep the data pooled, you want to specify yes, and you'll go down to calculate. So let me do this on the calculator with you. Okay, second. Sorry, not second. Calculator is slow right now. Uh, 
Okay, let's quit this. Okay, it looks like my calculator may have crashed. I'm sorry. My calculator crashed. Okay, um, I'm going to restart the computer here. Not, not the Mac, but I'm going to restart the Windows. I don't have permission. Okay. Looks like I'm having tef technical problems and I can't show this to you on the calculator. I'm sorry. Um, we'll just use the screenshots that I have as part of the PowerPoint here. After you s hit calculate, after you hit calculate, you're going to have the information uh, for the p-value. p equals 1.79028 zero four and then it says e negative five and we have seen this before if we have e anything after a number it indicates that we're going to need to use standard we're going to need to use scientific notation to put the number into standard notation we're also told the degrees of freedom which is useful if you're using um, a chart to answer the question, but we're going to be using a p-value, so we don't need that. X1, X bar 1 is reiterated, X bar 2 is repeated for you. Um, you can scroll down and see even more information. The most important thing is to note the p-value. Now when you take this p-value and you take its decimal point and move it five places to the left, you get a very small number. Okay, so you take the decimal, which is between the 1 and the 7, and you move it 1, 2, 3, where is it? I lost my cursor. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places, and when you do that, you get 0 0.0000179, which I think is the smallest p-value we've ever seen in any of our hypothesis tests. P-value of 0, when rounded to four places, it's a p-value of 0, which is practically nothing. So when if you get a question like this on web work, you may have to enter a p-value of 0. Um, if it's rounded to four places and that's what it is. So this p-value of zero is clearly smaller than alpha. So if we compare alpha at five percent with the p-value of zero which is non-existent, the p-value is practically zero, smaller than the alpha which is in brown. The sample statistic negative 2.5 is considered very significant. This is the most significant sample statistic you could have. This is the strongest evidence that the two populations are very different. So our conclusion is going to be to reject HO and accept HA at alpha equal 5 percent. And the reason is because our p-value is smaller than alpha. Do these sample results support the sociologist's claim? So the sociologist made the claim that uh, northern brides marry later, and so this definitely supports the claim. So if you want understanding for how rejecting the null hypothesis supports the sociologist's claim, when you reject the null hypothesis, you reject that the two populations have the same mean. Remember that the null hypothesis stated that the difference between the two means is zero. So if the difference is zero, then they are the same. Our test has proven that the two population means are significantly different. Okay, so we show that there is a big difference between mu sub 1 and mu sub 2. 
So we're using our sample to come to a conclusion about a population and the sociologist claim is proven. We are not going to cover uh, type 1, type 2 errors when regarding when looking at tests like this. Um, you do have to understand type 1 and type 2 errors with respect to the other tests that we covered. Um, so uh, that's hypothesis testing for one population, but I'm going to omit it from this lecture for um, two populations. So let's look at another